the old lumps on. They are a big lump. Brilliant. The crank is really tight. I can't turn that by hand. But I can see lots of grinding marks here, here. Yep. Yep. Is that where you've actually balanced it? This, this is the balancing. Yeah. This is the weight matching of right. the con rods. Oh, okay. So the balancing is on the crank. Yep. And then each connecting rod has been machined so that it's identical in weight. And then balanced end to end as well. This engine is going to have less vibration. Yes. Which yes. means the smoother it is, yep. the more powerful it is yep. as well. It'll give us higher revolutions through the rev range of the car. Brilliant. And a lot smoother. <laughs> right, OK. It's going to need lots of building up. We start from here, bottom up. Yeah. We start by oil pumping, front engine sealing block, which yeah. we now machine from billet instead okay. of aluminium. OK, so that's the old bit. Yeah. Air Dads knew that as monkey metal or Maziac. Yeah, OK. Very, very soft. Right. And then this... Is, is the, the new, new steel piece. one. Yeah. So that's machined from a solid piece of steel. Yes. We better start building this up. Yeah. So yep. from the back to the front. the front. Yep. Okay. One oil pump. Right. Now. So vanes checked, pumps checked. Yeah. We drop her in, centralise her up, and then bring in your oil feed. So we're going to drop her in. And the oil pump is driven by the camshaft. And the camshaft drives the oil pump, the, yeah, the oil the pump distributor. and the distributor. Yeah. So it's all basically all connected together. Yes. If you'd just like to knock them down, please, okay, sir. Okay, we'll do it. And they want a torque of about 15 pound. The torque wrench is a tool that is used to determine the actual torsional setting, setting yes. of the so each of the bolts is set to the same setting. That's it. Rather than just going ooh, yeah. slipping them up. Yeah. Okay, Lovely. there we are. Oil pump in. And we'll set that to the height that we've chosen with the sump. Yeah. Because that is a lock nut on there, so that's okay. tight. Okay. Next, I would start with the two gaskets, which are shim gaskets, okay. which sit basically here. You've got to get that to line up with the hole. And that's essential to make sure that the oil that's inside the engine Stays yeah, inside. Stays there. inside. Yeah. There we are. Look at this. This is really old school old fashioned. stuff, isn't it? <laughs> really old school stuff. You line them up. Yeah. Tap them down. One Look. end will split away. Yeah. A lot of people, when they see this in the kit to build up an engine, they go, a little bit of packing wood in here. Yeah. I've seen these little holes here filled with silicone. Yeah? Yeah. Blimey. And we want to avoid silicon because silicon can get into the engine, get into the always, gum them up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. While we're at it, first, if we just trim those two pieces of okay. gasket there. Right, so we need this strange horseshoe shaped gasket. That's the one. And the rear crank oil seal carrier. Right, okay. And the rear seal as well. Yep. Now, it's important to get these seals in the right way around. It is. If you look on the inside of the seal, you can see a little tensioning spring which keeps the lip of the seal nice and tight, which prevents the oil passing from this side of the seal and out, which would then mean that it would go out onto the clutch. I've just wiped a little finger full of oil on the back of the crank first, just to aid that lip seal from sliding on. So, lubrication, the most important word in engineering. If we there we go. That's it. That goes on to there. Just yeah, to if you just take it down gently. We've got to get that, that lipless nice feel. Nice and flush. Yeah. Would you like to do the finger test? Yep. That's lovely. Okay, I'll do These this are talked again. These are 20 pound foot. Do you ever use power tools when building an engine? Not likely. There we go. That's no. what I wanted to hear. No. Use, you, use the elbow feel. You can always feel if a nut or a bolt is cross-threaded if you're doing it by hand. I'm just going to run a feeler gauge around the oil seal. I like to make sure the lip is actually seated backwards. Okay. You can feel tight spots with it. You're feeling for a tight spot as if the seal is sitting in an awkward position. Yeah. You've just made sure that the lip of the oil seal was not just pulled, yeah, pulled out when we've pushed the, the yeah. seal on. To always buy the best torque wrench you can afford. Always keep it calibrated. 
Yeah. So that you know that the readings you're setting it to are correct every time you're building your engine or working on your car. Okay, spigot bush. Now this looks like it's made from phosphor bronze. Phosphor bronze, yes. Right, and that sits in the end of the crankshaft. Now, the spigot goes in here, and then when you fit the gearbox, that fits inside there. Phosphor bronze has self-lubricating properties. You don't have two alike metals running together, which means that you would actually get loads and loads of wear very quickly. Yeah, yeah. Right, now, which way around am I going? They only have one way and they will align to the dowel and the two studs on the back. That's the baby. Yeah. Now gently, dead blow hammer, my favourite. Yeah. We take her on and again we listen for the sound yeah. changing that she's home. Yeah. Anybody's rebuilding, always look for a good section on your spring washers. Spring washers? are not all the same. A good quality spring washer has a good large surface area on the flat sides here and also a good thickness of metal because if you use a really cheap thin one they'll just spread out and instantly become ineffective when you fit them. I'm going to put some really old-fashioned sealant held out. Absolutely amazing stuff. It'll stay sticky all its life. So what you're doing when you're fitting a gasket is just providing uh, a piece of material that will take up the undulations between the two surfaces yep. so that you can get a close seal. Yeah. If you want to make it seal, use a thicker. Uh, I reckon I'm right there. I think you're right as well. Yeah. My yeah. word, young man. Look at that. Would you like a job? You really like to make sure that your engines retain their oil. Yeah. That's the important bit, really. It is. It, yeah. it is. It's the, it's the lifeblood of the engine. Yeah. Everything here looks really nice and clean, actually. This sump itself, you could eat your, your dinner off it. Now, we can fit the sump. We can fit the sump. We're never going to see you again. Goodbye. Never. Get it on. See if I can get it in the right position first time. Lined up. Yeah. Nice. There we go. There's quite a lot of give in that gasket, isn't there? Yeah. It's really, really going to seal well, I think. Yeah. We should have a nice, even pressure on that gasket, so yeah. no oil should ooze out of this. Lovely. Sump. The reason why magnetic sump plugs are so good is because, as you can see, they will stick to any ferrous metal. So magnetic sump plugs, they're a great idea, really simple, the idea is that the magnet is within the oil. As little bits of the engine get worn off, will get caught by the magnet and keep them out of the way of all the bearings and stuff like that in the engine, so reducing engine wear. Brilliant idea. Right. Like that. Here we go. That's it. There we are. So these core plugs basically fit in to holes that are in the side of the engines. If the engine gets really cold and the coolant in it Expands. starts to freeze yeah. and expand, then rather than the block itself, which is cast, getting split, these get pushed out. That's it. It's still a bit of a pain when it happens, but it's not as bad as, as, losing, a split an, block. Yeah, as yeah. losing an entire engine. So some of them are cup shaped like this, and others are dish shaped like this one. And the dish shaped ones actually get put in with the convex side outwards. You hit directly in the centre, that makes this go flat and spreads out the outer edge so that it grips into the side of the block. Ingenious really, just does it by expansion. And we're going to put the front engine plate on. Okay. So the flat end towards the rear of the engine yeah. and then the end with the two bolts in that goes at the front because that's what holds the camshaft sprocket that's it. in place. Bit of lube, yeah. engineering there lube. We are. You can't beat a brummy okay. with an oil can. That's right. As we go in we're gently going to turn 
just to make sure just that to make sure we're lubing in the journals at the same yeah. time. So this is the cam lock plate, and what it does is stops the camshaft from working its way out. It's yeah. quite a simple thing. It's just an engineered piece of steel which fits into a groove on the end of the camshaft. I find engine building quite therapeutic because that is going to turn under a power of an engine. Yeah. If we just check that is going to slide. Yeah. The cam is going to turn. We're feeling for high spots. Yeah. So there are no tight no spots. No tight in there. spots yeah. whatsoever. We're feeling for thrust on the end. Okay. So thrust is the amount of fore and aft float. movement. Yeah. Yes. So it's float. End float, thrust. Yeah. All the same, same kind of thing. Of thing. Yeah. I can feel that through the years of doing it. Yeah. That that is running absolutely superb. You'll see it lift and fall, lift and fall as the cam operates it. So the DTI is a dial test indicator. Okay, that's now set to zero. We're now going to bring the camshaft lobe up, which has put a little bit of pressure on it so we know it's seating. Yeah. You'll follow her all the way to full lift. You'll see it go back downwards there. Yeah, okay. And we bring her up again. Yeah. We're going to measure full lift. And that is full lift on the camshaft. And again, we're watching the clock as she comes okay. up. We're looking for absolute top dead center on the piston. Okay, I'm just. I think that's it. Superb. Then. That is number one piston yep. set at top dead center. Yep. And we've also set the camshaft so that the inlet valve is at full lift. Yep. By getting number one inlet valve on maximum lift and getting the piston on number one cylinder yep. right to the top of its stroke, that puts it in perfect timing, that's perfect it. harmony. Yep. What we're going to do next, we're going to put a cam yep cam gauge, dial gauge on yep so we're Sorry. lining that with the woodruff key here okay the woodruff key is the thing that holds the crankshaft sprocket, sprocket. in place that's it come on keep going one that's it Dead yeah on. yeah 105 degrees off after top dead center that what we're doing here is timing as perfectly as we possibly can the camshaft to the crankshaft yes so that we get the optimum gas flow coming through the engine so that we get maximum breathability that's it because that's what we want with this engine okay off with the gauge and off with the pointer off with the pointer i've brought across your sprocket okay your spacer spacer we must not forget to put the oil flinger on that's so the little oil flinger that goes on in front of the crankshaft sprocket yep and behind Behind the spacer for the spacer front. for the oil seal. Right, so I've got the cam wheel here. So there's a deep dish side and a shallow side. So should I take it that the deep dish side goes over the yep. retaining clip there? We're going to line that up that way. Yeah. We're looking for two of the holes line up perfectly. What you do is you go around link by link. Link by link. Ah, uh, yes. There so you, you go. It spot on. Bang on. Ah, okay, so there are locking, locking tabs. Yes. On Triumphs, it's a lock tab. Yes. Single use only. Absolutely. If ever a locking tab is used to hold a bolt or a nut, only use it once. Just drop all the other cam followers in. Okay, so I've got all my cam followers in. All lubricated and lovely. But that means the valves are going to open at precisely the correct time to provide maximum gas flow through the cylinder head here. You can see the inlets and exhausts. Here are the inlets and here are the exhaust ports. So the gas has to go in, through and then back out that way. It's important that that gas flow is kept as smooth as possible. Once that's on we have the rockers to go on which go on there and those are in turn operated by push rods which sit into the buckets there so if you imagine that's sitting up there those move up and down like that 
And that is the main build of the engine. This is going to be a little rip snorter of an engine, she I reckon. Should be. She certainly should be. Yeah. The studs are all in now. So we're at the point if we can fit the head gasket. So head gasket in, making sure that it's top to top. Top to top. Right, I'm feeling strong. Rest it on the studs. That's with it. With it. On. There we go. I'll stop you there because when I build an engine right. and I go to put it into the car, I'll leave the rockers and the push rods off right. so that there are no valves open because once upon a time I'll put all the rockers on. Unbeknown to me, I was actually caught with something going into an inlet valve. As soon as I turned it over, it jammed in a piston. Okay, if we leave all of the rocker gear off yep. so that the valves are all closed. Yep. Before we fit them, yep. we can just get a magnet in just on the check. inlets and exhausts just, just to make sure that either nobody naughty yep. or a pixie yep. has put anything exactly. inside the port. Exactly. Very good point, actually. Yep. I like that. I like that a lot. Just saves a lot of time and yeah. expense. Are we going to fit the spark plugs now? Yes.